All right, I want to talk uh, for a few minutes. This is meant to be targeted at analytics engineers, people who are working with software or development engineers that are trying to get information tracked to an analytics system or to a marketing platform generally. I want to talk about why QA is hard in web analytics and what to do about it. So number one, let's talk about why this is an issue. I want to give you a little bit of a background in case you aren't a software developer about how software engineers use testing. Testing is what software use engineers use to enforce quality. Let's talk about how that works. So say you have a website and it's, uh, and you have a login system on that website and you want to make sure that when people enter the correct username and password, they actually get to log in. Over time, you may make changes to that functionality and you want to make sure that no matter what, still when people click the login button with a correct username and password, they get in. The way that you do that is you write some tests and I'm going to show you what an example test looks like in a code base here. So here's an example test. You might describe a scenario where you say, load this page. Then you can test that scenario where you say, when that page loads, let's make sure that this, this testing is supposed to confirm that this ID gets stored in, in persistent storage in the browser. So we say, load that page. When that page loads, confirm that that ID is the ID in the query string parameters, the same ID that lands in the storage. Now, if we were to ever deploy new features or change this functionality at all, when we deploy our code to production, those tests run. If those tests ever fail, if we try to simulate the load of a page and that parameter in the query string doesn't match the parameter that we store, then we get errors. And oftentimes we can't even deploy to production. So that's what testing looks like. Web, let's talk about why web analytics doesn't fit that paradigm very well. Well, number one, we can't test the endpoints. So we're testing the functionality. We could write tests to, to test the functionality that we sent data to analytics, but we can't test whether the data lands in analytics or not. We can't write tests to do that because it's not in our code base. Also, it takes time to write these sort of tests and testing usually focuses on the business critical functions first. Tracking a user's behavior is not business critical, not compared to like charging a credit card. If you were charging a credit card, you'd write a lot of testing. You can't afford to screw that up. Um, so you'd write testing there. Web analytics is low on the priority list from business or business critical perspective. I want to show you one picture of how this looks in, uh, in real life. So here is, I'm going to switch this. Here's some Shopify code. This is, this code has errors in it, but you kind of wouldn't know if you're the developer running this the first time, this seems like a pretty reasonable thing to deploy. And if you're not testing, uh, and you can't write testing to determine this lands in the analytics platform correctly, you might not know that that's the issue. So this looks like a data layer push where you're pushing data to track an e-commerce transaction. You have to specify the revenue. This in between these curly brackets right here is a variable reference. So when this page renders, this value is different each time the page renders. It depends on what the order value was. And so this is how that transaction data layer push gets rendered. Now, notice this, this is, we're referencing the checkout.order.total net amount. If we look at, these are the Shopify docs. If we look, this, this shows what options we have to choose from. Notice there's a first, a judgment call, like which price do we use for revenue? Do we use the total price or the list item subtotal price? Do we want to include tax and shipping? Do we want to include gift card amounts or excuse me, uh, discount amounts? That's those, that's a judgment call first. The next thing is, We've, we've made it what seems like a logical decision to use this order object, but there's this note here that says, depending on the payment provider, the order might not have been created when the thank you page is first viewed. In this case, undefined is returned. So for some thank you pages, we might not have this object. Man, that's tricky. Only in the case of some payment providers, but we don't even know the list of payment providers. So this seems like a totally reasonable thing to do, unless you happen to catch this one teeny little note and think about which payment providers to check. In this case, this code got deployed live and we saw $0 in revenue get passed to the data layer in 30% of purchase scenarios. So we were under-reporting the actual purchase revenue value by 30%. That's a pretty big deal, but it's a pretty reasonable decision for the engineer to have made, at least in my opinion. So let's talk about, well, what do you do in this scenario? Since you, since it's not obvious to test, it's not obvious to know whether you've gotten this exactly right. 
there's a few different failure mechanisms. The testing exists here in the website layer, but you're, and maybe the data layer here too, but you can't test what happens in Tag Manager or test the logic or the filtering settings and analytics. So what do you do? There's two types of testing as an analytics engineer that you should be running. The first is, and these are my terminologies, but the first is acceptance quality assurance. And the second is data quality assurance. Ideally, you'll test in staging, in, in a tag manager preview, watching the data that gets sent to the analytics system, making sure that looks right. And then looking at the a staging Google Analytics data set, if we're using Google Analytics, and confirming that the data lands correctly in Google Analytics. If that's done right in staging, then we launch to production and we test after we launch to production. It'd be nice to make an annotation. Also, don't deploy before a business break, not on a Friday, not on a Thursday before you have a Friday off, and definitely, definitely, definitely not on a Black Friday weekend just before. Okay, but you're probably in this acceptance queue, you're probably only testing one scenario. In the scenario that we just talked about with Shopify, you're probably not testing each of the different payment providers, each of the different possible coupon codes, all the different products. You're probably just testing one or two to make sure that it looks correct, and that's pretty reasonable. It's impossible to test all of the scenarios that'll show up in production. That's why you need the second set of QA. So we have data QA. Within 24 hours of review, you should be reviewing the production data and analytics or the system endpoint for any irregularities, things without transaction IDs, things with, where it looks like you have a product ID in the space where a product name is supposed to be, that sort of stuff. Then within a week or two, sometimes faster, depending if the data volume is coming in quickly, then you review for the data in the system endpoint for trend change. If you've, if you've, if you've added some metadata to a transaction, then you'd expect that the transaction volumes would probably remain pretty similar. If they haven't, then you probably have an issue that's worth investigating. There are, at the enter, enter, enterprise world, there are, you know, if you're Amazon or if you're Home Depot or something running an e-commerce website, then you probably do have some testing around this. There's even tools like ObservePoint and DataTrue and Tag Inspector that you can create automated tests to monitor the data layer. That, that testing still only checks this functionality and maybe this functionality. It still is not testing the data that lands in the endpoint. So you can still have issues. You can pass these tests and not pass these tests. So point is you need these two stages of QA and hopefully that gives you a little bit of a, a, a background experience for what's going on in the software engineer's mind and how come it's reasonable that things get deployed to production that don't match all the production scenarios.